Welcome, my friends, to another Junior Church edition for YouTube. Yes, doing another video for you guys, and I'm excited about this one because today we're going to talk about a great topic, obedience. Ooh, obedience means to follow the rules, to do what you know you're supposed to do. Now, it's not always easy. I'll be the first one to admit it, but we're going to talk about obedience. But before we do that, we're going to sing a few songs, and we're also going to work on a little picture here. So you're going to need a pencil and paper at some point. So if you want to pause the video now, feel free. If not, at some point, you're going to need to help, help me out here a little, okay? So first, we're going to sing some songs, and my daughter Faith and I did this the other day. So it's going to look a little bit different, but it still hopefully is something you can enjoy as we sing these great songs. Hi kids, well we're going to do some music with you today, and I brought my friend Faith, my favorite youngest daughter, to help out. So we're going to sing some songs, we got two prepared for you. The first one might be one you don't know that well, it's called the Obedience Song. But obedience is something you should know how to do, which means to obey or follow the rules. So we're going to sing that one, so let's give that a try, and I'm going to start off. And we'll sing another one after that, okay? So let's sing. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands. Doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Oh, be E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Okay, the next one is called the Growing and Shrinking Song. So we're going to read our Bibles, we're going to pray every day, and we're going to grow. If we neglect our Bibles, or that means to forget about it, or not pay attention to our Bibles and pray, we're going to shrink. So we're going to start off awfully small, so get down here, okay? And we're going to kneel over, get small, we're going to start singing, okay? Read your Bibles, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bibles, pray every day, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, grow, grow. grow. Read your Bibles, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bibles, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Neglect your Bibles, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Neglect your Bibles, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Thanks, guys, for singing with us. Faith's standing on a little stool here, so it's hard for her to balance. But she did okay. So join us next time when we sing some more songs and pay attention because our lesson's coming next. Wow, really enjoyed those songs. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Pretty awesome song. So we're going to talk today a little bit more about Moses. Moses, last time we had a video, which if you want to go back and watch those videos, feel free. They're there for you whenever you want. But the fact is, we left him in front of the burning bush, having a conversation with God. And God was saying, I want you to do my work. And Moses, because he felt a little bit small, was making excuses. Now, fast forward a little bit in the Bible, and we're going to see that he did go back, and he's helping his people uh, out of bondage, out of slavery. And now they're wandering through the, the wilderness with God leading them. And they come to another place where God's going to reveal um, the Ten Commandments. These are the, the rules that God wants them to follow. Now there's a lot of other commandments he gave too, but these are the main ten. These are the important ones. So we're going to look at this. I'm going to read the passage out of Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to make a few comments after that. And then we're going to work on our picture here. So just please listen. Okay, it says this. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image or an idol. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. 
the Lord will not hold him guiltless, who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which your Lord, your God, is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, nor shall you covet the neighbor's servants, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything else that is your neighbor's. Now, that's ten commandments that God gave to Moses to give to the people to follow. These are the basic rules that really were important. Now, if we're going to look at these, these are still important to us today. Why do we want to look at these ones? First off, let's look at the first one. It says, thou shalt have no other gods. If you look at this in the positive, it means basically honor only God. Keep him a priority in your life. Number two, no images of God. Basically, honor his holiness. If you make an image or an idol or some kind of something that represents God, but it's not truly his picture, that's not keeping him holy. As we read the God of the Bible, we realize that he is holy, pure, he's perfect. Anything that we make with our hands is not. Number three, don't take his name in vain or curse his name. So we're to honor his name and not to use his name just kind of in an easy way. Sometimes when we're upset or angry, we say his name in vain. That's a big no-no. Number four, honor the Sabbath. Sabbath is what we call his holy day often celebrated on Sunday for us. Back in the Bible times, it was Saturday, but it's referred to as a rest day, a day of rest, a day of focusing on who God is and remembering he's the one in charge, that he's holy and pure. Number five, obey your parents. Ooh, that one was hard when I was your age. But basically honor the family, and especially honor the family and the, the rules that are within that family. Because if you can't honor those rules, it's going to be hard to honor God's rules. Number six, don't murder or kill. You're probably thinking, that's not a hard one for me. I don't do that too often anyhow. But basically, honor life. God's given us life. He's given us uh, breath in our lungs. we to honor that. Number seven, don't commit adultery. Basically, don't um, mess around in marriage. Take marriage seriously. Or to take the family unit, what God has given us, according to his word, and think about it in the right manner. Number eight, do not steal. Basically, as I look at this, honor those around you. Honor other people. Don't take their stuff. You know, sometimes with toys, we want to borrow someone else's toys or steal someone else's toys because we want it. That's a no-no. We're to honor God and honor those people around us. Let's see, number nine, don't bear false witness. Don't lie. Honor the truth. So if someone asks you a question and you want to lie and say, well, it wasn't me or he did it, and that's a lie, that's a big no-no in God's eyes. Last one, don't covet. Covet means to really want something so bad you can't stop thinking about it. So don't start thinking about so much about your friends this, if they have a certain toy that you want, or you want this uh, new game so bad that you can't stop thinking about it. Anything that takes our minds off the things God has given us or maybe he hasn't given us. So honor what God gives or what God doesn't give. Because he's behind it all. If we get something that's fun, that's exciting. If not, don't spend the whole time thinking about it. Because that's not honoring the God. So those are the Ten Commandments. How do we apply this in a sense real quick? Well, first off, I want to share with this. Then we're going to do a drawing. So pay attention just for a few more minutes. You guys are doing awesome. First thing, these rules are to be uh, remembered that these are formed by God. These rules are formed by God. God gave them for a purpose for us to follow. It affects the way we think about him and the way we affect and work with other people around us. Number two, these rules focus on living. They help us with everyday life, telling the truth, not taking stuff that's not ours, working well as a family, even for you some parents that might be watching this. Remembering rules are a good thing. We need structure. We need order in our family. So those are good things. The last thing, last little F, I'm using F's here, so I talked about formed by God, focus on living, 
but to be followed by you. Now it's your choice. Are you going to follow these rules or not? So let's do a little exercise here using my drawing. So what I've done is taken my whiteboard here and I have right in the middle, the numbers one and two, okay? On a line right below that, I have the numbers 11, 12, three, and four. That doesn't make sense yet, but it should soon, I hope. Next line down, just a little bit lower, you have 10, nine, six, and five. Then way down towards the bottom, we have the numbers eight and seven. Okay, now that we got that set, we're gonna do a little connect the numbers. Now, if I'm following the rules, I'm gonna do it one, two, three, four, five, six, and so and so. But if I'm not gonna follow the rules, I just wanna do my own thing. The rules, pff, who wants to follow those anyhow, right? I'm just gonna make it up. So I'm gonna go to one, down to eight, over to 10, back to one, over to 12, over to 11, over to six. If I keep doing that, I'm gonna have a crazy drawing, right? I need to follow the order that is given. And so we're gonna do that. So start with one, we're gonna draw over to one, down to two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, and 12 back to one. And if you look, that's a cross. Huh, go figure. Why is a cross important? Because it reminds us of what God, through Christ Jesus, has done for us by giving us salvation, as we find in God's word. God, God's word gives us the rules, gives us order, gives us structure. And we need to follow those rules in order for us to live right for him. The cross is a great reminder that, yes, he does give forgiveness, there is mercy, but for us, we also need to try our best to follow the order given to us. Like here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that makes complete sense. If we make up the rules, then it makes no sense at all. God wants to have us live the best life possible for him. And how do we do that? By following his rules. That's why we have the Ten Commandments. Hopefully this is good for you guys to look at the Ten Commandments, but not only just to look at them, but to live the Ten Commandments. Hmm.